Hey, cuties! I see you got yourself a handful of platinum tickets there. If you have any left over after spending your first few on other resources, maybe you're wondering what units or ARs you should get. The list is overwhelmingly extensive, so I won't be covering all of the options. You'll be getting just the distilled goodness here of which are the strongest recommendations. This overview will include both platinum tickets as well as selector ticket choices, for anyone who's feeling like treating themselves this holiday. As a bonus, I'll also cover the new 7th anniversary banner at the end. Alright, no more Lita. Let's hop right in. Leanna G! Just use Leannon. If you don't know this unit by now, you're probably a fetus and started playing this game. In her original 2020 release, Leannon Chi's introduction completely broke the game wide open. And I'm not exaggerating, everyone was using her. Gay furries were using her, Japanese artists were using her, I was using her. Move her behind someone and BAM! You win the game. Need to do challenges? Use Leannon. Dungeons? Use Leannon. Farming seeds? Use Leannon. Even three years after her release, some of this still holds true. I'm not cutting edge anymore, but Leannon ensures you'll be able to beat almost any content in the game. Her tenfold damage amp, chargeful, and extended movement makes her a staple. Much to the irritation of gay furries everywhere. The Smoky God! Like Leannon, you may have heard the phrase, just use Smoky God. A total one trick pony. <laughs> but damn, if that trick isn't ridiculously useful. Comparisons to her were a tongue in cheek joke, as unsurprisingly, the guaranteed damage amp from Leannon was more generally useful than the massive activation rate boost from Smokey. Everything changed this past year though. How? Walk on Tonkam Yugen. I'll spare you the details, but the main idea is that these two make out so aggressively, your entire team gets aroused and releases a load on the enemy. Challenges? Use Smokey and Walk on. Farming? Smokey Walk on. You can find Walk on Mugen easily on support. Get a taste of the nut, and you'll find out very quickly you won't be able to quit it. What do you mean? <laughs> Call him Clear Ahoy! Life wonders, swiveling in their chair and swirling their cup of wine, decided that this boring class was so important and released 10 billion Calm Clears these past few years as a result. And you know what? Uh, yeah, they were right. Despite the influx we got of this unit class, this 3 year old unit is still the best column clear permanently available. Racking over 10,000 damage per enemy hit her lively. She's got no frills like evasion piercing or damage amp to allies, so you'll need to make up for that with other units you bring. Even if it's boring, it's optimal. Get her if you're still building your own triple column clear setup. She'll be good when you're farming in any tall map. Yuma. Pristine? Never heard of her. Yuma makes an explosive arrival, with an evasion piercing board wipe charge that scales hard with more copies. Don't know what to spend your tickets on? More Yuma duplicates is a decent choice. After that first charge, I personally wouldn't use him to deal more damage. It's a good thing he brings more to the table. Local and board wipe damage amp, under the right conditions to be specific. In the end, he's only a bit more nuanced than Christine, so the most likely team building consideration after his charge is who's board wiping after? There's not Really a good answer for that, as the board web selection past turn 1 is still growing out of its infancy. Ignore that though, and turn off your brain. Just focus on how cool that first turn board wipe is. Good on Graduating straight from Clown College, he's brought some of the stupidest and funniest utility in the game. You've heard of Oz by now, right? Gorongach is Reverse Oz. He makes all the enemies able to hit your entire team. Sometimes even multiple times in a single turn. Unless your team is comprised of masochists, you don't want to bring this skater. Hmm, actually, you just stop then. Bring a team of masochists. Punishers and sacrifices have never been too useful before, but Gordon Gosh's existence breeds new life into them, opening the gates to tons of new gameplay possibilities and challenges. Jurong! Oh my god, it's Jurong! I absolutely love this unit! He is stupidly tanky thanks to his lifesteal, damage mitigation, and charge denial. Topped off with his looping border white charge. He is an absolute riot to play with. Enemies will be drowning in debuffs forever. A potent debuffer with Jurong can deprive the enemy of their ability to attack, to move, to activate the skills, to heal, and to get bitches. Awesome up to keep those debuffs on everyone. Not really useful for farming, of course. Challenges are more of this thing. More than anything, though, he's just really fun to play with. Pokemon! Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> no one can escape the Pokemon. Allies and enemies alike. 
His pull is just so damn remarkable in its reliability and totality that this one utility alone makes him worth bringing for farming free quests and handling many challenges. Repositioning as a whole is a lot harder to quantify in terms of impact to gameplay, as it doesn't make the funny big damage number go higher. In some quests, it's a pointless gimmick. In others, it opens the way to one turn phase clearing without relying on board wipers. This farming utility aside, allies exploring bunched up enemies unlock their third eye and decide to ascend with Boogie on the board. Get him now before the Boogie Man hunts you down first! <laughs> Lightning round! Some of the units today I've actually talked about before. I've prepared a short list of them with some of the new ARs tagging along. Three, two, one. Youngle, Itzana, and Taramite are permanent, so are redeemable by Platinum Ticket. Now, let's continue with the best picks for the paid variant selector, followed by the 7th anniversary transient summon. Kuji. Dot Amplification There's only two units who can do this, and Kuji does it far better with less effort. This is a unique pick in my list because I'm a big fan of meme-worthy compositions, and the comp that best memes with this fatty is Oz Perdus Shino. This Kushi's dot amp paired with an Oz Shino's countdown. All enemies will take 60,000 damage per turn. Most enemies, except for bosses, will be left with only 1 HP, even if they're packing 12 inches of defense buffs. And yeah, that's funny. Complete this setup with Jurong to make this dot last forever, or with Quantum to make this dot hit harder. Big meme as it is, it can actually make short work of a multitude of challenges. Uh, One must imagine enemy debuffers happy. Debuffs on your team are but a mere figment of your imagination, with Aizen stealing three from his nearby allies and removing one from himself every turn. Trade deal of the century! It's alright though, because he also tanks quite well. You'll find strong use for Aizen in both challenges and dungeons, where debuffs are abound. Seriously consider them, as we really don't have too many other choices for mitigation of multiple debuffs. And your status is afflicting your love singularities! Unacceptable! Algornon! Board White Damage Amp! This strong ability was quite rare up until recently, with Life Wonders democratizing it this past year. Algernon is a good example of this. Just for showing up, all your allies get a guaranteed damage amp that lasts forever. Now for the Greenhorns who don't know, Shiva Board Wipes has been a relevant strategy to all gameplay content since its original release three years ago up until today. Its main weakness was its damage being resistant to amp due to Shiva purging all removable statuses. Algernon's amp is not like other girls though, and won't be removed. Slap him in any team for a mild but satisfying boost in damage to help wipe the floor with your enemies. Rocky. Yes, Queen! This gaslighting, gatekeeping girl boss has a very simple primary function. In tall maps, out of the box without any seating required, Arachne is guaranteed to slap on a nice damage amp to all her allies, provided you place her in slots 1 or 3. I promise you, sweeties, this is all you need to know. She does have some damage mitigation, some funky pull effects on the enemy, and a quick charge with some supportive utility, but you'd only find limited use for these emergency measures for when you fail to clear in one hit. Her amp makes her strongly tailored for quicklers and farming on any tall map, so it's unlikely it'll come to that if you're using her in the right team. Slay, girl! Slay! Yes, queen! Kengo! Kengo, my beloved. Oh, how you've come so far from your humble beginnings. The character development came with a very nice kit that has not aged poorly at all. You're still able to solo over half the content in the game, and are still relevant as one of the best choices for dungeons, particularly when you're solo carrying with a bunch of unleveled twats while bringing the card EXP booster. Between insane damage that only ramps up as you take more hits, the most impressive guts tanking in the game making you essentially unkillable, and strong debuff mitigation to lessen your weaknesses and maintain your peak, you have brought the summoner's pride and honor as arguably being the strongest among them. I look forward to another glow up in your next appearance, partner. Roll out the red carpet, because the king of the coins couple is here. 
Kurogane has astonishing utility for this one specific quest that remains highly irrelevant in both early and late game, bypassing nearly all team building needed by completely trivializing it. He inflicts some meaty flat damage to all enemies and tone maps, and in scuffles this amount saps all their health above the last point. He also has a welcome effect of destroying extended movement to his entire team, including himself, letting you get your comp players in position with no trouble. We do have nice here though, and they have a point. The coin scuffles, after enough investment on your officer, are fairly trivial to team build for, and Kurogane's impact is diluted in other quests. Push the cynics away though, because when you join him on his cockpit, you'll be taken for an undeniably enjoyable ride. Hey. Eita is Greater! In the most digestible of terms, Eita is the Oz of tall maps. He also has overwhelming utility, having the rare ability to give his allies evasion piercing. Eita himself can pierce all defense buffs too, making him a very strong cornerstone unit to calm clearing setups, only seconded to Nomad. Compared to Nomad, Eita's amps are rather restrictive, and he doesn't have extended movement to handle turn one repositioning. The rest of his team has to make up for it, but fortunately, the selection of valid partners exponentiate, since he can make anyone clear columns with him. One more time, everyone! Eita is great! This doggo debuted with hypothetical strengths for the future, and boy, did the future come fast! His most notable gimmick is bestowing a massive damage amp and damage mitigation to the ally on your team you move. That massive amp can now be enjoyed by certain board wipers that prefer to move, notably Shiva, Yuma, and Livestream Mob. Shalala's personal strengths usually don't matter when board wiping, but outside of that, he enjoys an impressive amount of perks. Recharge, damage amp, evasion piercing, and damage mitigation. At his best, he's helping clear the board without a care in the world. And at his worst, he valiantly crushes the enemy personally. He's a good boy! You are! Yes, you are! She- <laughs> If Leanne and Shi gameplay was considered toxic, then Shiva gameplay would be outright radioactive. He's one of the earliest pioneers of reliable board wipe farming in the game, only preceded by a handful of units in more stringent setups. Or Shiva again in his base card, Tether Kuryota. It's just a different flavor from his base though. He sacrifices the utility of removing all buffs and the lack of need to move in exchange for even more damage and freedom from being tethered to another unit. This present Shiva is peculiarly restricted though, to board wiping consecutively only for the first three turns, making him best suited for free quests and certain challenges. Just be sure you bring enough additional amp to reliably clear though, because his emergency measures is lackluster. Treat him well and he'll destroy the enemies, as well as he'd destroy your ass. Walk on top of Mugen! Congratulations! You win the game! Well, as long as you get this unit with a bunch of other strong units. His closest competitor, Shiva, leads the battle with either moderate damage with strong utility, or extreme damage with poor utility. Walk on Strength is far less selfish, having overwhelming synergy with many combinations of units. Walk on shares all his buffs to the entire board, including Extreme Damage Amp. Slap and Smoky God for team wide Extreme Raid Amp. Slap and Nas for guaranteed board wipes. And Slap and Tower Mighty for guaranteed Extreme Damage and Mechanic Countering on these board wipes. The amount of ARs you can bring further inflates the amount of counters and amps you can arrange. Let Wakon's infinite love flood your insides, and all will be well. Ifrit. The number of uses Ifrit has is about the same number of bitches he has. Ifrit bestows a nice double amp and rate boost to allies he moves beside, but with no reliability in either amps and no extended movement. You'll wonder why you would bring him along when units like Lian and Chi exist. Also packed in is a delayed, quick build board wipe and a flat damage debuff. But uh, trust me, neither of these is practical. The drummers always seem to get the short end of the stick, don't they? The dark one that haunts this cursed existence has brought ruin to his feeble attempt at pleasure and mirth. Uh, translation please? If you know Fenrir, you get what I mean. This wolf's got no bite. His specialty is to mitigate damage, while soaking in the blood of his enemies to heal and build his charge. The sharp edge of his personality does not reach his fangs though, as the only other thing he brings is a moderate to fill charge that is astoundingly unremarkable. And so, with the gates of Ragnarok open for this vain, arrogant wolf, may you siege Valhalla elsewhere, perhaps in the many chronicles of Beast Tamer fanfiction. Is this kit dead or alive? 
Her biggest weakness is being able to understand how to use her in the first place. It's about as complicated as quantum physics. She has two states. On our turns, she has no range, reversing damage, and setting up her black box. In even turns, she has all the range, with damage amp and debuff cleansing. Now some perks are all locked behind her extended movement, so you can play chicken if you're on guard, or pursue the enemy if you're striking first. Her black box, when activated, neutralizes the enemy's movement, damage, and charge, while activating an impressive dot. Playing by her rules too strictly can burn you though, since you still need to play by the enemy's rulebook first. Maybe quantum physics isn't that hard to apply in practice, but you'll need to be well trained first and have to finger this pussy. Masaki. Line them up! Kurigane, Nomad, Eita, and now Masashi. A new centerpiece to Triple Calm Clearing has arrived. Unlike the others, Masashi doesn't offer quite as much utility for the coin scuffles with no counters to evasion. The trade deal he accepted seems worth it though. In addition to his personal amp, team amp, and his local rate boost, he uniquely acquires no movement, while enhancing the movements of his allies. More novel than that, he offers a respectful team charge full that has the potential to bring constant devastation in the right team setup. Dembret! Clapping both farm quests and challenges! Uh, correction is needed. Woo! That's a lot of choices. Starting off with the 7th anniversary banner, the 5 stars are packing heat. But pulling is a big risk due to the 4 stars offering next to nothing of value. Quantum might be a bit too big brain for everyday use, or even every other month use. Though, Masashi might be worth your time if you want a triple column clear centerpiece that doesn't need to move. Masashi is likely to reprint in a different pickup banner because of Hakechi bias, so you're better off doing that than accidentally picking up some of these has been bad members. If you came out of this thinking you had more options to choose from than you did going in, then <laughs> my condolences. If you still need guidance for picking, let me hold your hand. I'll be gentle. For the platinum ticket exchange, I recommend picking some more important items in exchange first. You can use what remains for the units. Skill seeds are a non-negotiable pick for both utility and show boating. Get both copies. Level seeds, blossoms, and coins are a bit more contentious to decide between, for reasons I won't get into. But just note that these are all reasonable picks if you prioritize showboating your max favorites as soon as possible. Now, I'd personally get the guild certificates too, but it's primarily for utility rather than showboating. Oh, and don't get the ARs, please. Among the units, go for Tato Mighty and Smoky God if you intend to build up Exodia. You'll need to get Waka Megan from the paid nomination ticket if you don't have him already. And you also need Summerpool Oz. You can bar him in Sports Slot since he's not available right now. If you're more keen on farming, then pick up Boogeyman, Otohime, and Dima. All solid picks for maps of different sizes. For challenge seekers, Jurong, Lian and Chi, Gorongach, Itzamna, and Gongwei are all fantastic to have. For the paid selector tickets, for the 4 stars, I'd honestly recommend you just skip this and save your money. But if you still want to swipe, try Aizen and Kushi for challenges, or try Algernon and Araki for farming. For the 5 stars, Falcon Chanka Mugen is my number one pick. But you really can't go wrong with any of the other recommendations. That's it for now, cuties. Catch you next time!